Congress, the Right Honorable Prime Minister. And here's the Prime Minister's statement, followed by all the leaders. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to begin today by acknowledging and thanking the Leader of the Opposition, as well as the Honourable Member for Papineau, for their encouraging words last night. Mr. Speaker, in our system, in our country, we are opponents, but we are never enemies. We are all Canadians. We may sit across the aisle from one another, but when faced with attacks on the country we all love and the things we all stand for, I know we will always stand together. Monsieur le Président, Mr. Speaker, today, more than ever before, I am very happy to see all of my colleagues from all parties in good health across the aisles. Uh, maybe use that, Mr. Speaker, through you to provide a little bit of advice to uh, my colleagues, I think my position and growing number of gray hairs entitles me to do this once in a while. And that is just to say we all uh, here are engaged in extremely demanding and stressful jobs. But uh, the stress uh, that many of you faced uh, yesterday was really uh, beyond and above uh, anything that any of us are really expecting to face. I would just say, while well, we resume our duties, and I'll talk about that in a moment, I would encourage everybody here uh, to take care of their health. Uh, be sure that you find some time to relax in the next little while. And also, if any of you, because we are not all in perfect health, if any of you are experiencing any undue physical stress as a result of what occurred yesterday, uh, please take the time to see a physician and get that checked out. I also, I also just want to say to Canadians, we heard a lot of feedback from Canadians yesterday. We are all used to the feedback we get very regularly from Canadians, uh, much of it in the form of uh, brickbats, and uh, some of it uh, deserved. Um, but in this case, Mr. Speaker, I think we all experienced the tremendous outpouring of warmth and affection and good wishes from people across the country, and we thank them, all of us, for it. I just also uh, want to convey all the good wishes that I heard uh, personally, not just from Canadians, but from our friends outside the country. I heard from President Obama, uh, from uh, Prime Minister Abbott, from Prime Minister Netanyahu, through statement from uh, Prime Minister Cameron. We've heard these expressions across the world. I think we were all, as Canadians, touched by the wonderful gesture shown last night at the Pittsburgh Penguins hockey game. So thank you to our friends in the United States and around the world. Of course, Mr. Speaker, um, we know uh, all too well that this is not a happy day for everybody, uh, in particular, a um, terribly sad day for all of the uh, family, loved ones, friends, colleagues of both Nathan Cirillo and Patrice Vincent. Uh, on a vu des photos de ces beaux gars. We have seen photos We've all seen of the those lovely men. Pictures of the, these beautiful guys, as Don Cherry would say. And um, our hearts really are with uh, 
with all of them. Um, we are so fortunate uh, to have people like this. The past couple of decades has, you know, we see across the world uh, increasing places where the planet is descending into savagery. And there are people who, every day of their lives, uh, stand on guard for this country and for all of us. And we obviously want to convey our gratitude to these two servicemen and their families, but also to all the people who undertake this extremely dangerous work. On behalf of the Mr. Speaker, I spoke of the state of much of the world, and I think for all of us who are blessed to live in a country like this, it is hard to appreciate, understand, fathom uh, how we can have people who so uh, despise and are involved in a movement who so want violence, who so uh, despise modernity, modernity, who so hate progress, that they can desire to drive out medical workers from their community, harm them, how they can enslave women, torture children, how they can kill, want to kill anyone who looks or thinks different than them. It is, in a sense, Mr. Speaker, beyond our comprehension, but it is very real. And in this struggle in which we are engaged, in which not only our finest values must be pushed to work, so must be and will be the highest unity and resolve. They are our ultimate and indispensable weapons, and that's what these people will face. Mr. Speaker, as regards the events of yesterday and in recent days, many questions remain unanswered. And during the course of the police investigations, we will find answers to these questions. However, I can tell the House this today. The objective of these uh, attacks was to instill fear and panic in our country and to interrupt the business of government. Well, members, as I said yesterday, Canadians will not be intimidated. We will. We'll be vigilant, but we will not run scared. We will be prudent, but we will not panic. And as for the business of government, well, here we are in our seats, in our chamber, in the very heart of our democracy and our work. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, this House, in its diversity, personifies Canada's spirit. To terrorism, and neither will this House of Commons. We carry on. We will attend to the country's affairs, and we will be faithful to the trust that people have placed in us. Now, Mr. Speaker, as I said earlier, and I have been saying for a long time, we live in a dangerous world. Terrorism has been here with us for a while and dangerously close on a number of occasions. I speak, uh, for example, I draw members' attention back to incidents such as the Toronto 18, the VO Rail conspiracy in 2013, and I could point to a number of others as well as many that most will never know about. 
For that reason, and with the belief and security that Canada is the government's primary responsibility, we have over the years passed such legislation as the Combating Terrorism Act and the Strengthening Canadian Citizenship Act to better protect Canadians and secure institutions. Last week, our government proposed amendments to the legislation under which the Canadian, intelligence, the Canadian Security Intelligence Service operates. And as you know, Mr. Speaker, in recent weeks, I have been saying that our laws and police powers need to be strengthened in the area of surveillance, detention, and arrest. They need to be much strengthened. And I assure you, Mr. Speaker, that work, which is already underway, will be expedited. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, we're all aware and deeply troubled that both of this week's terrorist attacks were carried out by Canadian citizens, by young men born and raised in this peaceful country. I share this concern and wonder what weakness could lead someone to reject a nationality that so many people throughout so many countries want for their children. That is a question for another day. For now, make no mistake, even as the brave men and women of our armed forces are taking this fight to the terrorists on their own territory, we are equally resolved to fight it here. We live in dangerous times, yes, but the mission of our country and the work of this parliament goes on, and so does the work throughout this city. Let me just uh, say one uh, final word in recognizing uh, all of the uh, heroics of yesterday. First of all, I know so many, I can certainly speak personally uh, to my staff at 24 Sussex, Monsieur Roger, Roger Charbonneau, uh, the, the chefs, Tim and Tina, who were up all night, but I know uh, people who, for all of us uh, across the country and here in Ottawa, were working day and night to uh, to make things as easy as possible. Officials who were busy at work trying to respond to the situation, uh, first responders and citizens who put themselves in harm's way when this incident began to unfold. But obviously, Mr. Speaker, and in conclusion, most particularly the men and women of our security services, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, Canadian Armed Forces, the City of Ottawa Police. And most particularly, of course, Mr. Speaker, I'd be uh, very remiss if I did not conclude in uh, acknowledging specifically the work of the security forces here on Parliament and the great work of our Sergeant at Arms. Most extraordinary moment.